Welcome back to Ann Arbor. We're inside the Chrysler Center, Eastern Michigan and Michigan. And who'd have thought it's Eastern Michigan who comes in here with the better record of the two. A 7-1 start for the Eagles, while Michigan is 6-2 to begin this season as they meet the starting lineups here tonight in Ann Arbor. We'll meet them as well as Eastern Michigan comes in with Raven Lee, the sophomore guard leading the way. Ethan Alvano is just a true freshman beginning all of the starts so far for Rob Murphy's squad. Anale Okoloji, one of the big men in the middle for Eastern Michigan. You see all the size with Okoloji at 6'8". Carrington Ward, 6'7", third team All-Mac a year ago. And Mike Samuels, the 6'11", junior. We'll see if that size causes any problems for Michigan. A look at the Wolverines. They run the same starting five pretty much for every game. Derek Walton in eight of the nine contests for Michigan has been the starter alongside Zach Irvin. Just five points for Irvin in the last game against the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Karis LeVert coming off his huge game against NJIT. The true freshman Cameron Chapman with Mark Donnell, a redshirt freshman in there. A lot of youth for the Wolverines and John Beeline. It's season number eight for Coach Beeline, 159 wins at Michigan, 707 in his career. And of course, 2014 Big Ten Coach of the Year leading this team to a Big Ten regular season championship last year. Rob Murphy, year four at Eastern Michigan. Last year, the best one so far, 22 wins. They made it to the Max Semis. Also a trip to the CIT. First 20-win season for Eastern Michigan since the 97-98 campaign. Just about ready to get things started. Corey, Raven Lee, this Eastern Michigan team. It was the shooters that caused problems for Michigan against NJIT. Michigan's had very few problems all time against Eastern Michigan. The last time the Eagles won was here in Ann Arbor, December 17, 1997. 89-83 win in overtime. We are underway here in Ann Arbor, and it's Eastern Michigan. It pulls down the tip, Okoloji securing it for the Eagles. And when you and I had the opportunity to talk with Coach Beeline, he said they didn't do a very good job guarding the dribble against NJIT. And when you think about that, if you're Eastern Michigan, you're going to try to attack and make sure you get inside the teeth of the Michigan defense. It's the freshman, Ethan Albano, with possession here. We'll see him and Mike Talley switch off at the point guard position tonight. Carrington Ward, one of the most accomplished players on this Eastern Michigan squad. Couldn't get that one to fall. And Samuels lost the rebound. Michigan touches the ball for the first time. Hurt losing it, and it's picked away by Raven Lee. And it's Lee who puts Eastern Michigan on the board. And that's one of the things you can't afford to do, especially for Michigan coming in, and you have to make sure that their confidence is wavering just a bit after losing at home to NJIT. You don't want to give easy baskets to Eastern Michigan and allow them to build their confidence early. It actually wasn't a slow start that hurt East Michigan in the game against NJIT. They had an 8-0 lead to come out of the gate. They got away as Highlanders just kept making shots. Donnell got in trouble but found Chapman, and he'll go to the free throw line after the first foul of the game. And after coming off a tough game, you don't want this to be your first offensive possession if you're Michigan. However, if you're Eastern Michigan, you love it. And Raven Lee with a little bit of excitement at the buddies going early in the game. <laughs> that foul is against Carrington Ward, his first. Now Chapman, the left-handed shooter at the free throw line. Chapman gets Michigan on the board. Chapman just a 65% free throw shooter, although John Beeline's team's usually pretty good at the free throw line. Well, and, and John Beeline's team also only has one senior and two juniors. They are a very young team. You know, one of the top 15 youngest teams in the country. So when you think about that, you think about Michigan under Beeline and how good they've been. But it's not a rebuilding year, but, but it's close to it. They just have off to a good start other than the loss against NJIT. Michigan hoping its defense can set up and stop some of these shots. NJIT 58% from the field on Saturday. A foul on the floor here against Michigan. First foul of the day against the Wolverines, and this one looks like to be against Karis LeVert. And one thing you can see, Rob Murphy has his guys in drive mode. They're not going to come out and settle for jump shots. Although Eastern Michigan is a very good shooting team, they want to be able to attack the basket. They have a number of guys that can get there with success. Fouls against Chapman, so one foul on each side early. Alvano runs the point, but Raven Lee handling the dribble here. 
Lovato kicks it out, finds an open Raven Lee. This is his first three of the night. On the offensive glass, it goes to Michigan. After some contact under the basket, Donnell hit the deck. And it was Okoloji who commits the offensive foul. And Okoloji doing the job on the offensive board. That's his first. However, Donnelly getting in position. Okoloji can't believe the call. However, Donnelly is set as he goes up. So, good call by the officials. Neither of these teams really turns the ball over a lot. So it's going to be up to these two teams when there is a turnover to take advantage. 2-3 zone from Eastern Michigan. Broken there, but an easy bucket that Zach Irvin didn't finish. And Irvin just rushed that one, trying to get it up before the shot blockers could get over there. Eastern Michigan does have size. Looking for the open shot. Carrington Ward takes it, but it rims out. Another offensive rebound for Samuels. He loses the ball after he was taken down. Let's see which of these other players steps up for Michigan. Not Walton, at least not on that shot. Missing long on the three. Levert did it all the other night. But really wanted to get some of these other guys involved. Well, Michigan refers to Levert, Irvin. There's a shot blocked right there by Chatham. Getting down and now Michigan pushing in transition. Opportunity. Walton gets the basket, a hard foul. But he'll go to the free throw line as Michigan leads for the first time. And great concentration by Walton to be able to finish that. As you see, he's able to, first step is great. But as he gets to the rim, he takes a tough bump. But a great concentration to finish it, an opportunity for a three-point play. Foul against Samuels, his first. You know, it's the third team foul. Talking before about Walton, Levert, and Irvin, Michigan considers them their big three, and of course, two of their big three showed up. Walton and Levert against NJIT. However, Zach Irvin only five points and did not shoot the ball well at all. And, and again, you don't blame that loss on the offense. It was more of their defense that let Michigan down. But you need their guys to step up and be successful. And those three, Levert, Walton, and Irvin combining for nearly 62% of Michigan's points this year. A turnover there, a traveling call under the basket, and already fourth turnover of this game against Eastern Michigan. You see Okoloji going baseline, the great defense and the trap there by Michigan. Once you put, once you pick it up, there's no putting it back down. I'm sure he would debate that, that there was a little bit of a physicality in there. The ball movement by Michigan trying to break this zone. How difficult is it to play this zone, and how much easier is it for Michigan having just done it against Syracuse? Well, it's never easy to play against it, however, that does give them an advantage because they were able to do it for 40 minutes against Syracuse and have success. But it was a number of big three-pointers, Mike Albrecht especially, breaking the tie against Syracuse, knocking down a three that helped Michigan to prevail in that game. But Michigan's, Michigan's confidence was a little higher than, than it is today. After that loss, I'm sure that confidence is wavering just a bit. And Eastern Michigan being able to pick up on that, they're going to be very aggressive against Michigan, both on the offensive and defensive end. So travel against Levert. Getting the ball back to Eastern Michigan. We've seen a bunch of turnovers early in this one. Okoloji not comfortable back behind the arc. Ward is, but he dribbles in. Pull away jumper from Ward falls short. And Chapman gets the rebound. Walton's been active early. Now Michigan's offense will reset. At the very least, we've seen their defense step up early in this one. Levert. Big three from Paris Levert. And a few feet to spare behind the arc. After falling behind initially to start this game, it's an 8-0 run for Michigan. And Karis Levert picking up where he left off. And Derek Walton now with a huge steal getting out. And he's getting an easy bucket for Michigan. Again, you talked about the defense for the Maze and Blue picking up. And they've done the job here early in this game. Eastern Michigan hasn't scored in the last three minutes and 50 seconds. As a timeout is called, and we take a look at how Michigan has opened up this game early. And this is one way you beat the zone. You knock down three-pointers and make those defenders have to pull out against you. And then, of course, one way to always win is getting the job done on the defensive end. Derek Walton Jr. with the great hands and the ability to beat everyone down the floor and finish on the other end.
10-0 run for Michigan. As they've jumped out early here against Eastern Michigan. And the Wolverines, I mean, they had, a, they had a good start the other night against New Jersey Institute of Technology. But to get a good start tonight after that loss has to be at least a little bit of weight off their shoulders. I'm sure it does. And we talked to Coach Beeline, and he talked about how much easier it is as a coach to get the attention of your players after you've had some adversity and some failure. So from that standpoint, I'm sure they've had quality practice and they got a bit of a, a wake-up call from Coach Beeline in between the NJIT game and here this evening. Five points already for Derek Walton. LaVert has three. Spike Albrecht has checked into the game for the first time for Michigan. As well as Michael Talley for Eastern Michigan, whose dad played here at Michigan. So, of course, you know he wants to have a big game here tonight. He's been very good so far this season, averaging in double figures. Despite coming off the bench, really losing his starting role to Ethan Albano. Tally was the starter at point guard last year. Shot clock at eight. As Price tries to float one over Walton, can't get it. Another offensive rebound, Nazioni pulling it down for Eastern Michigan. Jodan Price connects from downtown. That's Price's game right there. He was forced into a quick shot at the end of the shot clock before, but where he wants to find himself is behind that three-point line. He was able to knock one down in the corner. Eastern Michigan needed the basket bad. Price was able to answer. We've seen the Eagles give themselves second chances, controlling the glass so far in this one with a 6-2 edge. Another long three. This one was tipped. Nazioni grabs it before it goes out of bounds. There's great presence of mind by Nazioni not to let that go out of bounds, but to pick it up, knowing that his teammate deflected it. Raven Lee trying to spin to the basket, and Lee got himself into trouble. He travels, so it'll be Michigan ball. Good start for the Wolverines after a sixth Eastern Michigan turnover. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dish. Ask how to get the most football anywhere only with the hopper from Dish. Back here in Ann Arbor, Michigan trying to get back into the win column. They lost to New Jersey Institute of Technology Saturday, knocked them out of the AP Top 25. We're still smiling here in Ann Arbor. It's okay. It's early and everyone's breathing. I think everybody's handling it okay. Well, when you have hair or a hat that looks like that, you have no choice but to smile. That's a happy <laughs> hat. <laughs> Michigan have a lot of happy hats, they hope, after this one is over. They can get to be really sad hats very quickly, though, if things turn south tonight. <laughs> but a good start. Six turnovers from Eastern Michigan. And the Wolverines able to take advantage of those with a 10-5 lead early on. Michigan shooting three of six so far, while Eastern Michigan two for eight. That was really a big deal on Saturday, was that Michigan was trying to defend a team that just wasn't missing shots. Well, and Michigan also has taken the ball away from Eastern Michigan already with six turnovers early in this game. So the defensive effort for the Wolverines has definitely picked up. Some trouble here for Laverne. The ball getting wrestled away. Laverne hanging on for dear life. And at the very least, getting a jump ball. Great effort by Ajay as he battled for possession there with Laverne. And great effort by Laverne as well because instead of giving up on that play and just running back on defense, getting on the floor, he gets the ball back for the Maize and Blues. So you have to credit that. Even though he lost the ball, he didn't give up on the play. And they keep possession because of it. Nigerian born Olalakan Ajay. I'll just get that out of the way for you. Oh, I'm going to tear that name up <laughs> all night. <laughs> I can do Ajay. I just won't say his first name. Let's see how Spike Albrecht affects this Michigan offense. Shot clock down to four. Albrecht's going to have to fire it up here, but he did not get the shot off. Shot clock violation against Michigan. And great recognition by the Eagles and not allowing him to get that three-pointer off even though the shot clock was going down. A lot of times you'll give up that long desperation, but he had two guys run at him, and because of that, had to put the ball on the floor. They got the shot clock violation. Third turnover from Michigan. We've seen a lot from Eastern Michigan so far. More turnovers than field goals made between the two teams. Offensive foul against Raven Lee, charging into Ricky Doyle. And again, you see Eastern Michigan, they want to attack the paint. Raven Lee finding his way in the paint. However, Doyle stepping up, that is an offensive foul. Doyle stepping away. You don't have to shoot it for it to be a charge. Even if you pass it off, if you run that guy over, he's outside of the block, that is an offensive foul. Great call once again by the officials. 
First foul against Lee, fourth against the Eagles. I've started out wrong. I've complimented the officials twice already. Zach sure Irvin with the air ball. That. I don't know. That's an issue you're going to have to work out. I love the officials, though. I, I give them their props. They have the hardest game in college basketball, basketball general. Foul on the floor here. Ray Perone, one of our officials, along with Billy Eck. Corey Pfeiffer out there tonight. And they call this foul against Albrecht. It's his first. Second against Michigan. Eagles there trying to get that inbound pass. As Ajay and Price got in each other's way. We saw Price hit a three earlier. Not so much falling early on for Eastern Michigan. It's Tally, the Detroit native, who will go to the free throw line. Attack, attack, attack. Eastern Michigan is a good three-point shooting team, but they are not settling and at times maybe a little over aggressive trying to get to the rim. They're part of the reason why they've had the turnovers, but that time Tally doing a great job finding his way to the rim. And you can see Rob Murphy has his guys in attack mode. They know that Michigan has a hard time guarding perimeter players, and they have attacked those guys and getting to the rim. And that can continue to wear down, especially if they're able to get there and get fouled. That could eventually put the Wolverines in foul trouble and start to wear down their front line. Max Beal fell in the game for the first time for Michigan. Carrington Ward back in as well for Eastern Michigan. Tally averaging four assists per game, which is second in the back. Also one of three scorers on this Eagles team in double figures as an average for the season. And I didn't talk to Coach Murphy about this, so I can't say that this is the case, but I would almost say that he didn't lose his starting position. I believe it's one of the things where Coach Murphy probably wanted to get the freshman in there with the veteran lineup and allow Tally to be able to come off the bench and give them a spark off the bench and also a veteran score to come into the game so therefore they don't have that drop off you know, when they go to the bench. Now, I don't know that for certain, but a lot, I know a lot of coaches like to keep a consistent game plan going and they have veterans on the floor at all times. Spike Albrecht trying to break a three-minute scoreless streak for Michigan. Eastern Michigan can tie with a three. Price thought about it. It's foul. Hacked over near the sideline by Walton. First foul against Walton. The fourth against Michigan. Michigan not a team that fouls very often. In fact, one of the best teams in the country at not fouling. That's true. But, you know, one of the things about not fouling also could mean that people are able to penetrate the lane against you and they get easy baskets. So from that standpoint, that not fouling thing could be a two-edged sword. Teams not particularly shooting well so far in this one. Eastern Michigan trying to come back. Carrington Ward falls short of the tie. Rebound for the Wolverines falls into Walton's lap. Bird's been quiet early on. Up and up against Tally there. When you drop 32 the night before. You're going to get a lot of attention from the opposing team's defense. So every time the bird catches the ball, it's two or three guys around knowing exactly where he is. Way off there as Nazioni gets the rebound. I mean, LeBert's going to get a lot of attention from here on out. Absolutely. One of the best players in the Big, in the Big Ten as well. He's probably one of the best players in the country. And really shows, I mean, he's a testament to what they do here at Michigan because player development is huge with Coach Beeline. He's had some guys that have come in here that weren't highly rated out of high school, but many of them playing in the NBA right now. Stauskas, Robinson, McGarry all gone from recent Michigan squads. I'm trying to replace those players. That one left up short by Tally. It's Irvin that runs the floor for Michigan. Walton leaves it for Bielfeld who will go to the free throw line. Nazioni commits the foul. And Michigan will have a chance to extend their lead. Wolverines in Eastern Michigan back and forth here in Ann Arbor. He faced death, uh, looked it straight in the eye and said, I'm going to live beyond and I'm going to do something beyond my death. I, I think he became remarkable once he had cancer. He, he was always outstanding, but he became remarkable uh, in facing uh, that dreadful disease. Us beat cancer. The V Foundation awards 100% of direct donations and net proceeds of events to fund cancer research. Log on to www.jimmyv.org or call 1 800 4 Jimmy V to donate. Back here at the Chrysler Center in Ann Arbor, Michigan. 
10-7 lead early on against Eastern Michigan. Wolverines just three of nine from the field. The Eagles just two for ten. Both teams stumbling a bit out of the break. Absolutely. It hasn't been an uh, offensive shootout. And, of course, when you think about Michigan, they're always going to be one of the better offensive teams in the country. But I think the zone from Eastern Michigan has slowed them down. Eastern Michigan on the other end has turned the ball over way too much, especially if you're trying to come in here and beat the Wolverines in the Chrysler Center. Bielfeld missing that first free throw. You talk about the assist to turnover ratio so far in this game combined between the two teams. Two assists, ten turnovers as Bielfeld makes one of two. Hurt almost had a steal there. He leads this team in steals as he did last year. Great defender as well as a great scorer. Oh, three. Price putting it up from Detroit off the glass. It's a bank. <laughs> it's a little late for the bank to be open. I guess we had to just say that's the ATM machine, the 24 hours, because it definitely worked here for the night. An 8 1 run for Michigan. That was a deep three by Jodan Price. Nice move by Bielfeld, but he can't finish. Trying to get the rebound pushed back out. It's out of bounds off of Bielfeld. And give Carrington Ward a lot of credit for Bielfeld missing that shot. Bielfeld turned as though he had an easy layup, but Carrington Ward coming from the opposite side just contested the shot. And I think that was enough to throw Bielfeld off and missing the, missing the easy layup. Michigan now 0 for their last five. Eastern Michigan hasn't led since they were up 2-0. Chance to go ahead here. They're on an 8-1 run. Stop and pop falls short for Price. Or the rebound, the putback doesn't fall. And Chapman gets the rebound for Michigan. Stop and pop from three. And Aubrey Dawkins can't get it. Another chance for Eastern Michigan to reclaim the lead. Alano's going to tuck and run. Slides off the glass, though, and a rebound for Albrecht. Albrecht around the baseline. Hurt's going to throw it up from long range. That misses. And right now you can see both teams kind of pressing. Rob Murphy getting his young point guard to settle down, get back into running their offense. Everyone is just kind of going full speed right now because no one's shooting the basketball well. Everyone wants to be the guy to step up and make a shot. Eastern Michigan, 3 of 14 from the field. Hawkins almost had a steal. Michigan's 3 for 12. That one's way off, a foul against Michigan, or rather against Eastern Michigan, to give the ball back to the Wolverines. At four, the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs battle big man Raheem Christmas and Syracuse. Then UNC Wilmington squares off against Louisville and their monstrous front court. Holiday Hoops double enter begins Sunday at four on ESPNU, the home court of College Hoops. Last foul was against Samuels, his second, team sixth. A low scoring first half so far. It really has been, and you wouldn't expect that coming from either of these teams because both very good offensive teams, but yet the defense probably not their strong suit. Well, I wouldn't say that Eastern Michigan, that defense is their strong suit. Last year led the country in field goal percentage defense. Jodan Price with the steal. Alvano goes strong to the hoop. Put back doesn't go down. And Eastern Michigan can't capitalize on many chances to take the lead. Here's Dawkins. Chapman for three way off and it will go to Eastern Michigan after an air ball from the freshman Chapman and both these teams missing easy shots now you're missing layups Eastern Michigan has had two to three layups on the last couple possessions that they've been unable to convert at this point Eastern Michigan should be up four to six points simply because they've given up easy opportunities on the other end and of course as good as Michigan is you can't allow them to get away with you know giving up easy opportunities and not taking advantage of them because they're going to make a run here at home. Raven Lee tosses one up, it rims out. Jai gets the rebound, tally for three. That's no good. These two teams are combined six for 32 from the field so far. Either it's because of the cold weather or it's just late. <laughs> the nine o'clock game maybe is past their bedtime. Well, you guys from the southeast always ragging on the weather up here. <laughs> And it's freezing up here. <laughs> and I need to talk to whoever's involved in the parking situation. <laughs> <laughs> Zach 
back. Urban is fouled. That's going to send him to the free throw line. Nazioni sticking his hand out as Michigan gets into the bonus. Somebody needs to make a shot here in Ann Arbor. All the work that goes into getting these games ready, and they forgot to take the lid off the bucket. Well, after you've been upset and the country's talking about you, it adds a little pressure. And right now, Michigan, in my opinion, they're playing a little pressure right now. Coach Beeline just asking his guys, settle down, run our offense, get the type of looks we want. Quick shots for Michigan right now. And you look at a 3 of 13 from the field. But only to be worse, Eastern Michigan, 3 of 19. But because of Eastern Michigan has seven offensive rebounds and yet unable to get any second chance points on those opportunities. Zach Irvin at the free throw line. There's been one field goal made between the two teams in the last seven minutes and 14 seconds. Irvin earns another free throw. John Beeline, a little bewildered. This was supposed to be a game of improvement moving forward after that loss Saturday. Yeah, and it's a very good defensive team in Eastern Michigan with their 2-3 zone against a very good offensive team. John Beeline, one of the best offensive coaches in the country. And right now, defense is winning, although Michigan has a three-point lead. Wolverines, the very least, six for seven from the free throw line. That's helped. Stay ahead of Eastern Michigan. Open look. Carrington Ward can't get it to drop. Three for 20 for Eastern Michigan. I can add that one up pretty quick. That's 15%. That's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not going to win you many games, especially when you're on the road. Have you ever seen anything like this in a game? Believe it or not, I have. I've seen a lot of things. You remember, I was calling radio games for Virginia when Tony Bennett first took over, and they were scoring 19 points. <laughs> <laughs> nice pick by Mike Talley. Carrington Ward takes it all the way. That's one way to get him to go in. Well, so now 50% of Eastern Michigan's baskets have been breakaway dumps. <laughs> so from that standpoint, but you think about it, you know, they've gotten out of transition a couple times. That's one of the things that Coach Beeline said hurt them against NJIT, but that happens off of bad shots and turnovers normally on the offensive end. Albrecht is supposed to be the zone breaker. 18 assists, no turnovers in his last three games. Shot clock running down. Laverne can't connect. Ajay gets the rebound for Eastern Michigan and a chance for them to go back on top. Last lead was at 2 0. Raven Lee trying to work his way inside. Pull away jumper falls, and the Eagles have the lead. I now see the formula of Raven Lee. It shoot a tough shot. See, he's been getting easy looks. <laughs> he needed a tough turnaround fadeaway step back in order to touch the bottom of the net. But that time, the shot was true for the redshirt sophomore. Four points for Eastern Michigan's top scorer. Now Michigan trying to break a streak of nine straight misses. Although Albrecht there will get his first turnover in the last four games. Yeah, that's not something you see a lot of from Spike. Michigan trying to get it right back. Good job by Nazioni to save it for Eastern Michigan. A foul along the baseline. Walton goes down. Carrington Ward with the charge, his second. As you see, Raven Lee, the back down, step back, fall away, nothing but the bottom of the net, just the way that he planned it. That's a tough shot. However, he's shown that he's capable of making tough shots and a big one to get his team in the lead. Michigan hoping to solve some problems tonight in the first 15 minutes. Maybe getting more questions now than answers. Ruben almost turned it over. And that's who Michigan really needs to get going. They need to get Zach Irvin back into the mix and really scoring the basketball the way he has all year. Shot clock down to six. Zach Irvin. Fire is too strong. And now 10 straight misses for Michigan. They haven't scored a field goal in almost 11 minutes. And you credit the zone to an extent. You know, Rob Murphy in his zone, he was a Jim Beheim protege. So from that standpoint, you give the zone some credit. But also, Michigan is missing shots that they would normally make. And I think they're pressing just a bit, understanding that, hey, they're trying to get that stink off of them from the game that they lost earlier this week. 
And right now, you see they're just adding a little undue pressure. Foul on the floor against Levert, his first. Nice feed. Ajay had it pickpocketed, though. And Levert came away with it. Michigan needs a bucket badly. Doyle can't get it, but at least he'll go to the free throw line. And one thing Michigan has done, they've been doing the job defensively. This is where they struggled against NJIT. But Karis LeVert, you mentioned, leads the team in steals, not giving up on the play and using that tremendous wingspan just to take away what should have been a simple two points for Eastern Michigan. Ricky Doyle averaging seven points per game. He's 71% free throw shooter. Even that one doesn't fall for Doyle. Doyle's really had a great start to the season. He's shooting 70% from the field entering today's play. Right now, it's just a lid on the basket for Michigan. It's gotten contagious. They need someone, and that someone most likely would be Karis LeBert, just to make a play and get them a basket, break the seal once again, and give his teammates some confidence. Problem for Michigan against NJIT was that only LeBert was scoring. Tonight, nobody's scoring. And that's why I picked him to be that guy. <laughs> Tally. I know that was Raven Lee. And Raven Lee left it up a little short. Yeah, that, that one was an even tougher shot, and it showed in the result. Spike Albrecht misses. And a rebound for Carrington Ward. A lot of anticipation in this building just to see someone make a shot. Ward does for Eastern Michigan. And that was a great play by Carrington Ward, not only just to make the bucket, but to avoid the charge. He saw the Michigan defender setting up, waiting to pick up a charge on him. He's already got one. This evening, didn't want to pick up a second one and went to the floater and was successful. Levert leaves it down low. Ricky Doyle gets it stuck near the top of the rim. Doyle looking up at the basket to see if there is something on top of it. So how do you handle playing on the road? You get out of transition, you pull up, moving a little to the side, making sure you don't pick up the charge as Eastern Michigan goes up too. But we weren't sure which Michigan team was going to show up. Was it going to be the one that got through the 2-3 zone against Syracuse? The one where Zach Irvin at 18 points and Karis Levert 12 in a Michigan 68-65 win? Or the one against New Jersey Institute of Technology? Sure, Karis Levert had a big game, 32 points, but the Highlanders shot the lights out here at the Chrysler Center. Damon Lynn at 20, a historic upset for NJIT, 72-70. And Corey, I think we've gotten our answer in the first 17 minutes almost here tonight. I do believe so. The first half, it has been that second team, the team that lost to NJIT. Right now, I won't say the Eastern Michigan is shooting the lights out. However, at 25%, they're the best shooting team in the gym right now tonight. And because of it, they hold a two-point lead. It's been 12 minutes since Michigan has scored a field goal. 0 for their last 11. Four turnovers. At the very least, they've gotten a couple of points at the free throw line. That's what Ricky Doyle is trying to do here. Talk about the youth of Michigan. Doyle, a freshman, coming off the bench. First one drops for Doyle. Three games already in double figures this year. He's really seen his playing time increase in the last handful of games. That's one of the things you're going to see from young players, especially freshmen. They can't be consistent on a nightly basis, especially playing against good competition. This is a good Eastern Michigan team. They come in 7-1. They've had a lot of success at home. Lost their only road game at Dayton. However, they learned from that experience, and they came in tonight with a game plan prepared to win, and Michigan has played right into their hands to this point. Eastern Michigan started the night three for 20 from the field. They've made three of their last four shots. This one goes out of bounds. It will stay with the Eagles. Shot clock at 10. Michigan not afraid to get their hands dirty on defense. Not at all. And that's one of the things I'm sure Coach Beeline is excited about. When you, when, I mean, when you're a good offensive coach, you know at some point your team offense is going to be able to get the job done. Tally draws contact. He'll go to the free throw line. Only two free throw attempts so far for Eastern Michigan. While John Beeline and Rob Murphy try to get their offenses going. That foul against Albrecht, his second. And for Eastern Michigan, of course, you know, it's what a 10 minute drive for them to get here yep. from campus. So when you think about that, they want to play against these guys. They're the, they've been the aggressor here the entire evening, the entire first half. They had a bunch of turnovers, nine turnovers so far in this game. But outside of that, they've been the better team in the first half. And a lot of it has to do with the fact, you know, if you 
Wayne, if you're going to fight somebody, you better want to beat that person just as bad as they want to beat you. Otherwise, you're going to have your hands for it right now. Eastern Michigan wants to win this fight a little more than Michigan does. Mike Talley's been in double figures each of the last five games, including 17 against UNC Greensboro. He's got three so far tonight. And this free throw there kind of pushed that ball up toward the rim. Add the fact that a lot of these guys are from Michigan or Indiana or Ohio, and you always want to beat the big school because they didn't recruit you one. And more importantly, you have to watch them on TV all the time, and Michigan's had a lot of success. So from that standpoint, this is the big game for Eastern Michigan to be able to come into the Christ Arena and play against these guys. And again, they've been the aggression in the first half. Michigan's going to have to match their intensity. Walton throws up the three. It's too strong. It's out of bounds. And it will belong to Eastern Michigan. One thing we've seen in the last several possessions for Michigan, the shot clock has dwindled seemingly quickly on them, and they seem out of sorts when it gets inside of 10. And that's the zone. That's what the zone does. It doesn't give you anything easy on your first side. You have to change sides of the floor with the basketball and really try to find a weak spot in that zone. And to this point, Eastern Michigan hasn't cracked at all. Eastern Michigan not had a two possession lead yet. Bryce tries to give them one, but he misses. And now Walton with the rebound for Michigan. Walton's going to push, going strong to the hoop. And finally, a basket for Derek Walton. How good does that feel? Well, that's one way to beat the zone. You get down there before they can set it up. And Derek Walton using his speed and quickness, and more importantly, able to finish. A whistle as Raven Lee hit the deck. Foul against Michigan will send Lee to the free throw line. Coming up on the ESPNU College Basketball Halftime Report, we're going to take a look at Saturday's top matchups, including number 13 Utah against number 10 Kansas. These Wolverines against Arizona. And Andy Katz previews Saturday's big North Carolina Kentucky matchup. Michigan Arizona was a really good game last year. Arizona came in, one of the very few teams, the only non conference game. Up until NJIT that Michigan had lost in the past three years. So from that standpoint, only Arizona to come here and beat them. Now they've got to pay that game back going out to Tucson. But they've got to build some confidence here against Eastern Michigan or they could be in trouble when they get out there to play the Wildcats. A steal from Eastern Michigan. Carrington Ward taking it away from behind Doyle. Now a dangerous pass. Bryce almost lost it. In fact, he does. And a foul against Eastern Michigan, so Michigan will have a chance from the free throw line to take the lead. Friday, ESPNU brings you coverage of the 2014 NCAA Men's College Cup. The winner go home doubleheader as UMBC takes on number 16 seed Virginia at 5 Eastern and number 11 Providence against number 2 UCLA at 7.30 Eastern. Semi-final action kicks off at 5, continues at 7.30, presented by Northwestern Mutual. It's also live on Watch ESPN. Foul against Jodan Price, who's second. Now Walton at the line. Corey Walton runs a position that you're certainly very familiar with. When you have that kind of pressure of being one of these big three, and you see a scoring drought like this, what's that like for the shooters on this team? Well, actually, what he did on the last possession is the answer. He got inside the zone, was able to finish with the left hand layup off the high off the glass, and now getting to the free throw line, able to knock down two free throws. That's kind of the way you continue to put the pressure on Eastern Michigan's defense, but don't allow them to set up in that zone and sit back and make it easy for them to guard you. Walton has a game high nine. A good defensive play there by Irvin. He thought it was off of Okoloji, but it will stay with Eastern Michigan. And Coach Beeline saying that it definitely went off the Eastern Michigan player. I'm surprised that's not a conference with the officials to check that one out. Hard to see from right here. Tally got tripped up. Walton will get called for that foul. Seems like incidental contact more than anything. That's the second foul against Walton. One of the bonus coming up for Tally from the free throw line. And right now, Coach Beeline most likely going to take Walton out with the second foul, but actually at this point you might want to leave him in the game because he's been the one guy offensively that's given you somewhat of a boost. He's the only one. He's made three of the four shots. Tally gets another. Four field goals made by Michigan in this first half. Three of them from Walton is coming off. 
Abdur Rahman will enter the ball game for the first time for Michigan. And he'll put Gerald, I'm sorry, I was about to call him Gerald LeVert. Karis LeVert at the point, you know, he is the cousin of the LeVerts, <laughs> just by the way. You know, well, we the, forgive yeah. you that. Well, you know, I, at some point, I will be singing, I ain't much on Casanova. <laughs> Me and Romeo ain't never been friends, but I'm going to wait until he gets hot <laughs> in the second half because I'm sure he's going to get a good talking to by Coach Beeline at halftime. Just three points for the Vert. Michigan's also being out-rebounded heavily in this first half. Things have not gone well, but it's a tie game. Vert trying to dribble around this double team. Abdur Rahman takes the jump shot. Maybe he's the hot hand. Muhammad Ali, Abdur Rahman, the true freshman, nails the best jump shot we've seen all night. And now he's saying, I should have been in here the whole first half. Last chance for Eastern Michigan in this first half. Raven Lee almost lost it, fighting for it. And it is taken away by Abdur Rahman as time runs out in this first half. Both teams shooting poorly. But it's Michigan who does end up on top at the break. We'll take a quick break and then hand it over to Brendan Fitzgerald and Dino Gaudio with the ESPNU Halftime Report. Welcome back to Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Jazzy Russell, some of the great players in Michigan history. Rudy T up on that ring of honor here at Chrysler Arena. Len Rice, certainly a guy you know pretty well, Corey. Yeah, he's got a few buckets on my team, I'll say that. <laughs> 21-19 lead for Michigan here as the second half is about to begin. Both of these teams hoping for some buckets in these last 20 minutes. Karis LeVert only three points in the first half. Before they came on his first shot after that, he was silent. He really was. Eastern Michigan did a great job identifying him out of the zone. But I'm sure Coach Beeline has made some adjustments. You'll see a different Michigan offensive team here in the second half. Michigan 27-2 and all time against Eastern Michigan. Last time the Eagles won was in this building, 1997. The bank open for Eastern Michigan. That's the second time they've used it. This time, Okoloji. That's my guy, Okoloji, graduate transfer from George Mason. The opportunity to spend some time with him last summer. But I had nothing to do with showing him how to shoot that off the glass. <laughs> Remember, Eastern Michigan is 7-1. They started this season undefeated. They finally lost this past Saturday against Dayton. As LeVert goes up and under and gets on the board for the first time since very early on. Well, we talked about seeing some adjustments, and that's the first time we've seen LeVert attack the basket. So from that standpoint, one of the things you, you know about the zone is, especially when they play it the same way as Syracuse does, they're going to extend those wings. You'll have opportunities to drive past them. Normally there's a big guy waiting for you that time. No resistance at the rim from LeVert. Okoloji trying to attack the basket. Now an open look for Ethan Alvano. And a true freshman hits it from long range. Alvano just an 11% three-point shooter this year. But he made that one. And two back-to-back -back threes out of halftime for Eastern Michigan. And they kind of got their offense going a little bit. The bank was fortunate, but that one was a straight-on knockdown three. LeVert trying his hand from three-point range. It's almost time for me to start singing. <laughs> I knew it would get to a point to where I could start singing Casanova. I felt like he would heat up in the second half. I'm going to give him a few more baskets before I destroy our broadcast by my singing voice. Levert at 32 in his last game. You'd have really been singing the tunes if you were here Saturday. Raven Lee misses the three, and Walton gets the long rebound. Zach Urban looking for a shot. Runs into a double team. There's Irvin for three. 
That one falls. And all of a sudden, whatever wasn't happening in the first half is happening here in the second. They got, they got some go-go juice at halftime. <laughs> Offense got started. We might see both these teams get to 60 now. That would be fortunate. Sudden outburst from both squads to start this second half. Michigan is three for three since halftime. Samuels has been quiet tonight. But off the rim, he gets it to roll through. The 6'11 Samuels gets on the board. This is more of the game we were expecting coming in. Both teams able to, you know, be effective on the offensive end. These are two good offensive teams coming in. Zach Irvin again, this time short. Raven Lee gets the rebound. How can you explain the shivering offenses in the first half and the hot start to the second? Well, you know, and it's a small thing, but, you know, one of the things about this game, there was a women's game before our game. So the guys only got about 45 minutes onto the court. So their normal workout routine and warm-up routine probably wasn't the same. We're going to say that was the excuse for the poor shooting in the first half, especially being that they've come out on fire in the second half. Okoloji misses from the corner. Walton looking to push for Michigan, almost lost it, but stays with it. With the left hand, he can't finish. It's out of bounds, and it will stay with Michigan. And Michigan got it going in the second half. And, of course, Karis LeVert, the guy that gets them going, a great move with the left hand reverse, and then knocking down the three ball. And it wasn't just LeVert. Now Zach Irvin gets involved in the mix, and he's able to knock down the three. And now Michigan starting to pick up a little rhythm on the offensive end. Irvin averaging 16 per game, but he scored a total of 10 in the last three halves. There's Levert going strong inside, can't get it. And Carrington Ward pulls it off the glass for Eastern Michigan, who still maintains a rebounding edge in this one. Shai trying to fight off a couple of defenders. Now that one out of bounds, it will go to Michigan. Although Price thought it hit off a Wolverines, he was the last one to touch it. Showing from Rob Murphy's team in this second half, a team that started the year all with home games. They won all seven. First road game, a test at Dayton. They lost that one Saturday, but that was a tie game with about six minutes left. And Rob Murphy's team going to play three straight opponents that competed in the Elite Eight last year. They go to Michigan State next, so, so they, are, they really are tested in their schedule. Urban tried to save that one after the air ball for Walton. And at least the two teams after a slow first half have started shooting here in the second. Eastern Michigan down two, but trying to win here in Ann Arbor for the first time since 1997. A couple of great players we look back in the past for Eastern Michigan, including the Iceman, George Gervin. Won three straight scoring titles. First card ever to do that. Corey, of course, that great finger roll. Earl Boykins at Eastern Michigan from 94 through 98 was actually on the Eagles the last time they won here in Ann Arbor. Second shortest player in NBA history, just five foot five. And of course, Muggsy Bogues. He was all Mac his junior and senior year at Eastern Michigan. Iceman, that's my guy. One of the first people I actually met when I was drafted by the Spurs. I went to San Antonio and got an opportunity to meet George Gervin. Great, great man. And you know who's left off that list? My guy Brad Susi, you don't know that name. Great shooter at Eastern Michigan is now the director of basketball operations at the University of Virginia. And he texted me and told me I had to go to Zingerman's Deli today, which is great, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Out of a timeout, Eastern Michigan could tie or take the lead. Just like New Jersey Institute of Technology the other day. Hanging around, except yeah, the only thing is that they're not shooting. If they were, Michigan would be in real trouble. But they're defending. <laughs> so they, they've got the advantage on that end. But Michigan doesn't want to have them hang around too long and make this a game at the end. This is a veteran team from Eastern Michigan, and they will find themselves in the mix and a possible chance to win it if they get to stick around that long. Chapman with the jumper. That one goes up onto the top of the backboard, comes back in, and Chapman trying to end up with it. Loses it to Jodan Price. Bono and Tally both on the floor for Eastern Michigan. It's a different look. You got both the point guards out there. Raven Lee on the bench. I'm not sure if Coach Murphy was happy with some of his shot selection, but you see a great pass. And, and an ejection <laughs> from Mark Donnell. Yeah, even better defensive stop for Michigan.
Walton was the only shooter that had it going in the first half. Okay, three of the five Michigan shots in the first 20 minutes. The fact that Michigan only made five shots in the first 20 minutes. A foul against Michigan here as it goes back to Eastern Michigan. Sunday on ESPNU, Travis Trice and Denzel Valentine lead the Spartans against the up-tempo run-and-gun offense of the Golden Grizzlies. Oakland battles Michigan State. Our holiday hoops presented by Kay Jewelers Sunday at 8 on ESPNU, the home court of college hoops. Fouls against Chapman, his third. You're talking about Oakland. And they put up 77 points against Eastern Michigan. That's the most the Eagles have allowed this year. And they played them actually twice, I believe, this year. So very familiar opponent. Michigan with their 19 missed shots so far in this game. Only one offensive rebound. Eastern Michigan's done the job there. Harrington Ward looking for the lead. Ward has been pulled. Two for nine on the night. Heard almost lost it. Albano with the good defense. Expect Carrington Ward. Raven Lee. So he scores for Eastern Michigan. The job done. Just like on the Wolverine side. Nothing happened. Well, they spoiled us at the beginning of the second half, coming out knocking down shots. I thought we were about to get into an offensive matchup. And now Zach Irvin knocked down his second shot of the second half. And maybe Michigan can get him going and continue to establish a rhythm on the offensive end. Now, this game for Michigan is important for a number of facets. One, you need to win this game and be the in-state in -state foe. Is Jodan Price knocked down another three? Now Eastern Michigan starting to pick it up. But on the second point for Michigan, you've got to go play at the McHale Center against Arizona next. you got to make sure your offense is firing them all soldiers because that's a very good defensive team. And you don't want to go in there with your confidence down. Michigan's only other non-conference loss before Saturday in the last four years was against Arizona. Got to go to Tucson this weekend as Eastern Michigan has a chance here to reclaim the lead. Ward pull up jumper. Too strong. Good box out by Ricky Doyle to help Irvin get that rebound. Albrecht thought about it. He traveled. He's seen a couple of turnovers from Spike tonight. And Coach Beeline up arguing and I had to agree with Coach. I don't believe that was a travel. Spike Albrecht's left foot was still down. He put the ball on the floor. That call looked almost to be a bit anticipated. Ninth turnover from Michigan. It was funny listening to John Beeline talk to us earlier about his recruiting style and what he thought this team was going to be like and what it's turned into and how that's left them behind a little bit. When you look at it, he's got guys playing in the NBA right now, and he wasn't expecting for any of those guys, outside of Mitch McGarry, he wasn't expecting any of those guys to be early entry into the draft as Eastern Michigan now takes a one-point lead off of the aggressive attack by Raven Lee. Eighth lead change in this game. Olala Khan Ajay finishing the points for the Eagles. Eastern Michigan's not going to go away. Walton's pass for Doyle was a disconnect. And Carrington Ward ended up with it. Attack from Tally down low. Leaves it for a shy and another finish for the big man from Nigeria. To put Eastern Michigan up by three. And guarding off the bounce has been an issue for Michigan. And as you see it, two times in a row, it's the guards from Eastern Michigan driving. Raven Lee finds a guy who's able to finish at the rim. And Eastern Michigan has found the offensive rhythm and now a three-point lead. Haven't zapped the spirit out of this place yet, despite a 7-0 run from Eastern Michigan. Getting back in front. Eagles trying to stop Karis LeVert tonight. So far they have. But Michigan, if they're going to get back in it, they got to have this guy start doing it. And he's going to have to pick it up in a hurry. He doesn't want to allow Eastern Michigan to hang around. And LeVert has found opportunities, but they've come few and far between, knocking down the three. He's a very capable scorer, but he needs to be more aggressive. And because he's such a capable scorer, is why we find him on the Wooden Watch. The Wendy's John Wooden Award, preseason top 50 candidate. Harris LeVert's had a great season. 50% shooter from three-point range on the year. He's two for three tonight. Three of seven overall from the field. Eight points, three rebounds for LeVert. 
I mean, not just a scorer. I mean, averaging over four assists per game. So you think about all the things that he does for this team. But right now, you know, I've got to give Rob Murphy and Eastern Michigan a lot of credit. The zone has slowed down Michigan's offense even more so than Syracuse zone did. What do you think the difference has been tonight against Syracuse as, as what we see tonight against Eastern Michigan? Honestly, I think it's a lack of confidence by Michigan after losing against NJIT. I think they're questioning who they are. They're not as confident. And because of it, they play lackluster on offense. Well, they're lucky to get that shot off, but it goes out of bounds. And it will be Eastern Michigan ball. The Eagles on a 7-0 run, leading in Ann Arbor. Joe Dan Price, one of the few sharpshooters so far in this one. And he's been the advantage for Eastern Michigan. Three out of four from beyond the arc. Got started with the bank shot early in the game, but the next two have been pure for him. And Price has really given them a spark off the bench and shot the ball confidently from behind the arc. His three three-pointers match the total for Michigan. Michigan only three for 14 in the game. Price three for four from behind the arc. Michigan was shockingly upset by the New Jersey Institute of Technology Saturday. They've come out here tonight. They have not shot well, just 30% from the field. Three of 14 from three-point range find themselves trailing nearing the middle of this second half. I mean, another issue for Michigan, they've had 40 offensive rebounds in their last three games. Only one offensive rebound here tonight. Rebound there for Zach Irvin on the defensive end. So Mike Albrecht's even had a tough night, as consistent as he's been in a Michigan uniform, especially this year. A couple of turnovers from Albrecht. Michigan trying to stop a 7-0 run. Derek Walton finishes short. Another rebound for Eastern Michigan. You mentioned the offensive glass not going to Michigan. Nice move up and under. A hard foul. Tally will go to the free throw line. And a great drive by Tally getting out in transition. Gets Walton on his heels. And that is a foul. Walton got, came from behind and hit him in the back of the head. Levert. Doesn't like the call. It was a clean block on his end. However, the foul's on Walton. But you've got to respect the aggressiveness of Michael Talley trying to attack the rim. And he's done his damage at the free throw line, but also four assists. And he's been the catalyst off the bench for Eastern Michigan. Third foul against Walton. And Eastern Michigan now has its largest lead of the night. Offensively in the second half, the Eagles, Okoloji, Alvano, Samuels, Ajay, all getting on the board. None of them scored in the first half. Maybe they got their go-go juice at halftime as well. <laughs> now Tally connecting at both free throws. Michigan came out shooting well in the second half. Three for three. They are one for nine since then. Maybe some shots to fall. They're going to get out of here with a win. Yeah, really. That's just when I was about to get the single. Harris LeBert hasn't been able to get it going. Knocked down his first couple of shots in the second half. And since then, not much again from the leader of the Maze and Blue. Doyle's had butterfingers today. Everything that seemingly come his way in the paint has slipped right out of his hand. Shot clock running down. Albrecht takes it inside, leaves it for Doyle. And finally, Ricky Doyle hangs on to one and jams one home. <laughs> he heard you talking about him calling the Butterfingers. <laughs> Maybe a spark for Michigan. This is about the time you expect for Raven Lee to start being aggressive, attacking the basket. Stops and pops instead. It falls short. Samuels fighting for the rebound. Ward grabs it, throws it up. Can't get it. Samuels can't finish. And it goes back to Eastern Michigan. But Albrecht, after a deflection, ends up with the ball. Now Urban rims out. Doyle fighting for the rebound. And it's Eastern Michigan who comes away. Still one and done for Michigan, even though they had a little effort on that one. Unable to come away with an offensive rebound when Eastern Michigan actually had three offensive rebounds on the last possession alone. Rob Murphy seeing his team getting a little excited, calling a timeout. You want to get the lid off the basket, the simple way to do it is put the ball in with two hands. 
Great penetration by Spike Albrecht dropping it off. And Doyle able to finish over the top of Eastern Michigan. However, still unable to get any offensive flow going. Maybe that basket can spark Michigan's offense, but to this point, Eastern Michigan has done the job not giving anything easy, especially against that 2-3 zone when they're able to get set up. Yeah, there were some questions in the local media after Saturday about the effort of Michigan. Have you seen anything to question that tonight? No, I believe they play hard. It's not a question about whether they play hard or not. I think they're pressing. I think when you lose a game to an NJIT, especially at home, you come in and it's almost a hero mentality where everyone says, I'll make the change. I'll do something different. Instead of doing it as a team as they've done it through the entire time that Coach Beeline has been here, now each and every guy is trying to take it on himself. Irvin with the last three-pointer in transition. Maybe a good shot for him because he is a good shooter, but yet a rush shot, and you don't want hero basketball going on. Just run your offense. Take the opportunities that you work on in practice every day. Saw John Beeline trying to coach up his team, and it was mentioned after a loss like you suffered Saturday that maybe you get their attention a little bit more. But now eight minutes left and change in this one, and they're down against Eastern Michigan. Well, and this is a young team again, so adjusting to adversity, being able to come back is difficult to do. Raven Lee has not gotten on the board in the second half. He won't hear an offensive foul against Eastern Michigan as Levert went down. That'll be against Lee, his second. And Rob Murphy and Lee both thinking the same thing because as Lee goes to the basket, he gets a lot of contact right here, knocked off line. And as he goes up for a shot, Levert stepping in, taking the charge. No question about the charge, but I'm sure Lee and Murphy both asking, where's the foul before I even got to that point? Bielfeldt with a spin and a kick out, but a foul before that. It would be against Samuels. Big man thought it was clean. Six foot eleven, Mike Samuels, transfer from Indiana State, but he missed two years while there. That's his third foul. That's his second. Second team foul in this second half against the Eagles. Forest as Michigan's offense has been tonight. They're only down three. They're only down three, but the longer you go in this game and you allow Eastern Michigan to hang around, that means it's much easier for them to knock down a shot to end the game or win the game. Karis Levert misses. Ward the rebound. Now Raven Lee trying to get on the board in the second half, and again unable to. Derek Walton pulls down the board. Walton taking it inside, kicks it out. Levert jumps it back inside off the glass. That's 10 for Levert. First Wolverine, first player from either side to get into double figures tonight. Price, long range three, misses a little short as Raven Lee comes barreling in for the rebound. He'll get called for the foul. Lee can't believe it despite all the contact. Eastern Michigan trying to wave their way to the finish line tonight. The Eagles trying to pull off the upset in Ann Arbor. Three things we all should do every day. Number one is laugh. Number two is think. Number three is you should have your emotions move to tears. If you laugh, you think, and you cry, that's a full day. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind. It cannot touch my heart. And it cannot touch my soul. And those three things are going to carry on forever. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Help us beat cancer. The V Foundation awards 100% of direct donations and net proceeds of events to fund cancer research. Log on to www.jimmyv.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. More than two decades now since that unbelievable speech, and it's like you hear it the first time every time. Watch it every year. Eastern Michigan has a lead over Michigan. It's Wolverine ball after a timeout. Michigan did lead eight by eight at one point, just like the other day. They had an eight nothing lead to start on Saturday before losing to NJIT. They were up 10-2 in this one. 
At that point, we kind of felt like Michigan had fixed their issues and they were ready to roll. And Eastern Michigan not going away. It's only been because of Eastern Michigan shooting problems that the Wolverines are still in this one. Bielfeld. And Michigan back on top. First, second chance points in this game for Michigan. Tally with the runner. You got to respect the answer by Eastern Michigan. Losing a lead, but coming right back down and executing their offense to get one of their top scorers, Michael Talley, a run to the basket where he's able to finish. This 2-3 zone of Eastern Michigan has really caused fits for the Wolverines tonight. It slowed them down. Michigan wants to play a up-tempo type game. They don't necessarily want to sit there and spend 30, 30 seconds on the shot clock to get a quality shot. Albrecht had his pass batted away, trying to save it in a foul. Ajay knocking Albrecht over from behind. At four, the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs battle big man Raheem Christmas in Syracuse. And UNC Wilmington squares off against Louisville in their monstrous front court. The Holiday Hoops doubleheader begins Sunday at four on ESPNU, the home court of College Hoops. Michigan lucky there that Ajay came barreling into Albrecht because the shot clock was down. Almost three. They definitely caught a break there. It was a bad offensive possession for Michigan, bailed out by a foul. And now they have to face the 2-3 zone again. It's called a 2-3 zone. This is really not a 2-3 zone. When you see the wings all the way out in the three-point line, it's more like a 2-2-1. Is the size of Eastern Michigan a problem? It definitely helps the zone when you have your wings Going about 6-7. Albano got it knocked away from Walton. After a turnover, Michigan looking for the lead back. But a dogfight here tonight in Ann Arbor. Zach Irvin puts the Wolverines back on top. Eastern Michigan calls a timeout. Irvin's got 10. That's his second triple of the night. Eight points in this second half for Irvin. And he's the guy that Michigan really needed to get going. Karis LeBert, of course, is their top scorer, but coming in second. And another guy they rely on is Zach Irvin. And here, off the LeBert pass, he steps in, shoots it confidently. And afterwards, I don't know if he's saying, call me? <laughs> or if he's ringing it up from long distance. Either way, he's got a phone to his ear, and he's had three points to his total. Michigan now four for 17 from three-point range tonight. Levert's hit two, Irvin's hit two. If there are any thoughts about getting somebody from outside the big three involved tonight, it's not going to happen tonight. They need to make sure it's Irvin and Levert and Walton down the stretch. And those guys average over 45 points a game combined, and 45 might be enough to win this game. So if those guys can get to a point to where they're having an average night, I believe Michigan will be in good shape. Walton scored nine in the first half. Irvin and Levert have combined for 15 in the second half. And together, the three of them, 29 of the 40 Michigan points. And the last time Eastern Michigan went down, it was Michael Talley getting to the rim for the answer. We'll see how they come back out of the timeout and who they go to to get the best quality shot. Nazioni spun his way to the basket and he gets fouled. Brandon Nazioni will have a chance to tie this game from the free throw line. He has not scored in this one. I like Nazioni's aggressiveness. He didn't settle for really just picking the ball up and waiting for one of the guards to come get it. He's able to put it on the deck and get to the rim himself and try to tie this game up at the free throw line. Nazioni averaging four points per game. Nails the first. He had nine points. A season high against Rochester November 26. Seven rebounds in that one. Michigan native, but he went to Des Moines Area Community College before transferring to EMU, and he's tied this game. He's pure from the line, too, and Nazioni getting minutes at crunch time for Coach Rob Murphy. Five different Eagles have scored in the second half after not scoring in the first half. And this shows you the depth of the Eagles. They only have one starter in Carrington Ward on the floor right now in crunch time with four minutes left to go in this game. Spike Albrecht thought about it. 
Michigan again having to settle for a lot of passes before the shot. Shot clock at six. Levert trying to find Bielfeld down low. is tipped and taken away. Inside of four minutes. And Eastern Michigan not only has it gone away. They're trying to hand Michigan its second straight upset loss at home. Well, Eastern Michigan only returns five lettermen from last year, but a team that led the country in field goal percentage defense, and now you can see why. They are a very good defensive team, regardless of the competition, and their defense has kept them in this game. Now we got to see if their offense can get them a win. Tally to Carrington Ward, and Eastern Michigan has the lead. We talked about Eastern Michigan coming out of the timeout. Would they have an answer for Zach Irvin's three that put Michigan up by two? And the answer was yes. They find themselves now with a three-point lead. Bielfeld cuts into it. And Michigan wants a timeout. Three minutes left coming off a loss to the New Jersey Institute of Technology that knocked them out of the top 25. And Michigan at home again down to Eastern Michigan thanks to a three-pointer from Carrington Ward. Well, guarding the penetration has been an issue for Michigan. This time, Tally gets inside the paint and finds it to Carrington Ward, who was an all-Mac player last year, and he answers with a huge three. But at the other end, Michigan doing just the same. Derek Walton Jr. finding Bierfeld in the lane and able to finish to get Michigan back within one. Theme around Ann Arbor after the loss Saturday was improvement, not panic. They wanted to get better because of that loss. They wanted to move forward. But tonight, if they don't pull this one out, what's the future start to look like for this team this year? Well, if the future looks, the, the, the close future looks them because they have to go to Tucson. And if you lose two in a row here at home and have to go to Tucson with a young team, that could be a very difficult challenge for the Michigan Wolverines, but you know, this Eastern Michigan team is a good team. You know, the NJIT game was a shock, and this would be an upset. However, this Eastern Michigan team is good. It's not like it's a bad team coming in Crisis Center to play the Wolverines. Tally comes off the bench as the point guard for Eastern Michigan. He's really got the bulk of the playing time tonight. Instead of Alvano, problem here, he turns it over. Like a foul away from the ball, but either way, Michigan gets the ball. Down one in the final minutes at home. Short trip for the Eastern Michigan fans and a 43-42 lead here in Ann Arbor. 2.41 to play with Corey Alexander. I'm Wayne Randazzo. And Corey, Michigan really in trouble here as they try to stave off a second straight home loss. Well, and we asked what team we would see, which Michigan team would we see. And we've seen the team that lost to NJIT on Saturday because this Eastern Michigan team has really come in and been the aggressor all evening. The 2-3 zone has taken Michigan out of their offensive flow. Michigan's going to have to find someone to get inside, penetrate that zone and make a play for themselves or one of their teammates to get an easy bucket. LaVert has 10 points, Irvin has 10, Walton with 9. Walton was really doing that early on, but he hasn't done it so much in the second half. So who do you point to to step up here? Well, it's got to be one of those three guys, but of course my choice would be LaVert. He's the junior, he's their best player, and he's capable of scoring in so many different ways, not only from behind the three, but attacking the basket and a good passer so he can find his teammates. When you look at all those things, he would be the guy that I would want to make step up and make a play. One thing to be on upset alert like they were on Saturday. It's another thing to be in a high alert like they might be if they lose this one. It's been 17 years since Eastern Michigan has won a game in this building. Trying to get around two defenders. Irvin from the corner. Left it short. Kind of forced that shot. And again, a, only one opportunity for Michigan. And Eastern Michigan continues to stay with the same lineup. The only starter for Eastern Michigan on the floor is Carrington Ward. Their leading scorer, Raven Lee, on the bench. And Coach Murphy trusting this group to walk away with the win. 
And a three drains from Jodan Price. He's hit four threes in this game. And the officials actually ruled that a two-pointer foot on the line. I'm sure they'll check that at the timeout. But a big shot regardless. Albrecht trying to get it back, but he can't. And Nazione gets the rebound. It was Spike Albrecht who hit the big three against Syracuse to break the tie 63-63. Unable to come away with the basket there. But he's one of the guys Michigan's going to need on the offensive end to step up. But right now, the Bays and Blue have to step up and get a stop. Tally attacks the basket. Almost lost it. Nazione does. And it's Michigan Bull. Great offensive set by Eastern Michigan. Two defenders run with Carrington Ward to one side, leaving Jodan Price an opportunity to get a wide open look. And Michael Talley making the right choice, finding the open shooter. December 2007, the last time Michigan lost two non-conference games at all. UCLA and Central Michigan. This time it could be the New Jersey Institute of Technology and Eastern Michigan. A timeout from John Beeline. Side of a minute to go, Michigan, Michigan down three. A tough out of conference battle highlights next Saturday's journey to the tourney matchup as this Michigan team travels to Tucson to face a daunting road test against Stanley Johnson and the Arizona Wildcats. The journey to the tourney is part of Holiday Hoops Saturday, 5:15 on ESPN, the home court of College Hoops. It doesn't get any easier after this one. It really doesn't, but this is the important one if you're Michigan right now. And you're going to see some of Coach Beeline's best stuff because right now, down three, it's crucial to get a basket. Whether it's a two or a three right now, you're going to get the ball back. But you need to get a basket on this possession. Otherwise, you give each of Michigan a great chance of walking out of the crisis center with the win. Eastern Michigan's 7-0 start was their best since the 95-96 season. They almost got to 8-0 for the first time since joining the NCAA, losing in the final minutes to Dayton on Saturday. The Eagles are for real and trying to make a statement to get to 8-1. And Michigan, their second consecutive crushing non-conference home loss. Albrecht turns it over. He got lost in midair. Nobody was open in the paint, so he kicked it out, and his teammate wasn't ready. And one of the most sure-handed players in college basketball, Spike Albrecht, rarely turns the basketball over. But you see the great play by Michael Talley getting over and really confusing Albrecht coming underneath the zone. I believe he sped Michigan up just a little bit, enough to throw up the concentration of Albrecht, and now Eastern Michigan sits in a good situation. For them, it's simply about making free throws and taking care of the basketball, and they can make that short trip bus ride back home with the win. Michigan has turned the ball over 13 times tonight, four from Albrecht, well above their season average, and the fewest turnovers in the Big Ten last year as they do to start this season. Eastern Michigan, 2-27 and 27 all time against the Wolverines, although both wins have come in Ann Arbor. The last one in December of 1997, they have the ball after this timeout. What's their plan on offense? Well, the plan on offense right now is simply to take care of the basketball. Michigan's going to have to try to get a turnover or a foul. So if you're Eastern Michigan, it's simply about handling the basketball and going to the free throw line, knocking down your free throws. Michigan can't allow them to waste with so much time because now they need to extend the basketball game. But they'll pressure early to see if they can come away with the steal. If not, they'll put Eastern Michigan on the line. Michigan has four fouls to give. That means they got to start fouling a lot and in a hurry. Price will inbound. He's been the leading scorer tonight for Eastern Michigan. Almost a steal. Tally had to go down to the deck to maintain possession. And it will be Michigan Bulls. Well, the first thing we said was you have to take care of the basketball. Tally, and of course, there's a lot of contact right there, but Tally is out of bounds as he goes down with the ball. He was smacked on the arm, no question about that. Now Michigan gets a quick turnover. What's their plan on offense? Well, the plan right now for Michigan is to try to find something in the paint. I wouldn't be as concerned about taking a quick three. I want to attack to see if we can get something in the paint or maybe even a kick out for a three once you attack.
Carlos Levert at 32 on Saturday as 10 today. Misses the three. Nazioli the rebound, and he's fouled by Albrecht. And it was a very good play. Well executed, a good shot for Levert. Just didn't go down, but you can see the play was designed for him to be the guy to shoot the three. But what Eastern Michigan has done very well is only limit Michigan to one opportunity all night. And Nazioni coming up with a big rebound. But we talked about the foul situation. Eastern Michigan has to foul two more times just for, to get Michigan. I'm sorry. Michigan has to foul two more times just to get Eastern Michigan into the bonus. So right now it's simply about getting the ball in bounds and not turning it over. Eastern Michigan uses their last timeout. It's actually three more fouls that Michigan needs. That last one was just their fourth in this second half. March 12, 1996, one of the biggest wins in Eastern Michigan history. First round of the 1996 NCAA tournament. Shocking Duke in the opening round, 75-60. Earl Boykins at 23 points that night as Eastern Michigan pulled off the big upset that night. Trying to pull one off in Ann Arbor tonight. And with everything pointing their way, they have held Michigan to just 33% shooting, 20% from three-point range. And Eastern Michigan, one of the teams, you know, play, expecting to challenge Toledo, the preseason pick in the, in the Mac West this year. This would be a statement win for their program and for Coach Rob Murphy, probably the biggest win in his four-plus year career at Eastern Michigan. And for Michigan, after making it to the national championship game a couple of years ago, almost got back to the Final Four last year, and now staring a second straight non-conference home loss in the face, and a lot of uncertainty for their program. Well, and again, this is a very young team for Michigan. Coach Beeline having to teach a lot of things for the first time to a lot of these guys. He's got a couple veteran players, but each of those players is really in a new role than what they played in the past. But isn't that the college game now? Yeah. Don't you have to deal with that? That is the college game right now. No one's going to feel sorry for Michigan after all the success they've had over the last three to four years. No one will feel sorry for them. Duke has three freshmen starting. I mean, there's certainly big-time programs around the country that are succeeding that are dealing with the same thing. On pass, Carrington Ward jumps up to handle, and he's fouled. Fouled by Abdul Rahman, who hit a nice jump shot near the end of the first half. We haven't seen him since. Well, Carrington Ward auditioning if this basketball thing doesn't work out. Maybe some tight end work in the NFL going up to get it. Was a risky pass. However, you don't want to turn the ball over at your end of the floor. If you ever turn it over, you turn it over at the other end. Still two more fouls before the bonus. There's one as Walton grabs a hold of Tally. So now finally, the next Michigan foul will put the Eagles at the free throw line. But time running out, and if you do put them at the free throw line, and Eastern Michigan's able to go and knock down at least one of those free throws, the front end of a one and one, now you're talking about at least a two possession game. And with only 16-6, it'll be less time when they're able to get the ball in bounds. That last foul was the fourth against Walton, and this foul will put Nazioni at the free throw line. Brandon Nazioni with 14 and 3 tenths remaining. will try to ice this one for Eastern Michigan. Michigan only with one timeout, so if he is able to make any of these free throws, when you get the basketball, it's important to push full speed, try to get an easy bucket, and then call your timeout to stop the clock and set up your pressure to try to get a steal in the backcourt once again. And obviously, the loss Saturday was shocking. How surprised are you at this one? I wouldn't have been surprised surprised about this game had they won on Saturday. But with both games, after losing Saturday and coming into this one, it's shocking. A big miss from Nazioni. A three for Michigan would tie the game. Walton lost it. Trying to save it. It goes into the backcourt. And Michigan able to call that last timeout. Beal felt diving into the backcourt to at least maintain possession for Michigan and keeping slim hopes of tying this game alive. Well, and a heads-up play by Coach Beeline, understanding that he had the timeout left, and as Beal Fox dives on the ball, Coach Beeline calling the timeout from the sideline, saving his team the 1.3 seconds. They'll get the ball right around half court, which is more than enough time for them to be able to design a play to get off a three-point shot. They might even add a little time as to when Beeline actually called that timeout. 
We'll see if they do put a little bit more time on the clock. So now, inside of two seconds, Michigan able to keep the ball thanks to this great play by Beal Felton. That ends up moved by the head coach. Well, we got to look at Coach Beeline. He calls a timeout at 2.0, so it should be at least two seconds on the clock. Eastern Michigan won't be happy about that. However, it should be at least two seconds on the clock. You saw Coach Beeline signal to the officials timeout. Take a look one more time at Bielfeld diving onto the floor, securing the ball in the backcourt. And John Beeline at the top of the screen calling for the timeout. And you see, look at the clock. Timeout, 2.3 seconds. Where Coach Beeline calls for the timeout. So add a second to the clock, which gives Michigan, of course, much more time to design a play to get that three-point shot off. They haven't shot it well from three tonight. Eastern Michigan's defense has been all over them. And even though at this point, Michigan really doesn't deserve to win this game, it's just one of those type of nights where they can throw in a three and send this thing to overtime. It looks like they will add that entire second back onto the clock. And even then some, 2.4 seconds remaining. If you're Eastern Michigan, do you foul here? Honestly, at this point, you have a foul to give. Yes, you do have a foul to give, but you have to be so careful not to foul someone if they are turned facing the basket and the opportunity to make it even seem close to a shot attempt. I think if you make Michigan catch the ball with the back to the basket, then you reach in and foul. But don't allow a foul at any point if they turn to face the basket. Michigan has been ice from three-point range tonight. Four for 20. If you're Michigan, who takes the shot? LeBert. Albrecht will inbound. Zach Irvin at the buzzer. Can't get it. And Michigan has lost its second straight non-conference game at home, upset by Eastern Michigan, 45-42. With time running down, Zach Irvin has to take the final shot. Irvin, like many Wolverines, cold tonight. It looked okay off the hand, just a little bit wide to the right off the rim. And Michigan now 6-3, and three, back to back. Home losses, the eruption from the Eastern Michigan bench. And the Eagles now 8-1, and one, including quite a road effort here tonight in Ann Arbor. On behalf of the Michigan basketball team, thank you for your attendance during tonight's game. Please drive home safely, buckle up, go home low, everybody. And to all of you, we say good night, Michigan. Eastern Michigan pulling off the improbable win. Rob Murphy, the head coach of the Eagles, standing by with our Corey Alexander. Coach Murphy, just in your words, how sweet is this win? It uh, feels great. Uh, you know, we're coming off a tough loss at Dayton. We knew we had the team to come in here and compete. Uh, I know they were coming off a tough, a tough loss as well, but they were well prepared, and I thought it was a bigger challenge for us to come in here after what they went through. It says a lot about our team. Our guys did a great job of playing defense. I think we stifled them and didn't let them get comfortable all game. Uh, impressive win for us. The big picture. Uh, Non-conference, you want to win and keep preparing your team to get ready for conference play, and I think this is a huge win that can catapult us and uh, continue to get better. And of course, with your ties to Syracuse, and Syracuse being here only two games ago, how much of that game film did you watch, and how did that help you guys prepare for this game? Uh, it was it was uh, huge. Uh, we, we watched that game. I also went back and watched the Final Four game from a few years ago, and I knew they would attack our zone the same way. Obviously, in watching it extensively, uh, we were able to stifle them. We knew all the actions they were going to run. Uh, our thing was to keep them out of transition, to make sure we rebounded the ball, keep them out of transition, and uh, execute better on the offensive side of the ball. I thought we did that the second half. Guys showed a lot of guts. Uh, we didn't close out as well as I was like, but I'll take the victory. Uh, this is a huge win for Eastern Michigan in general and our whole athletic department. We've worked hard for this, put ourselves in position, so we'll build on this. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Congratulations. Back to you, Wayne. Thanks for having me. Eastern Michigan, a 45-42 victory. Another upset here in Ann Arbor. And for Michigan, certainly more questions than answers here tonight at the Chrysler Center.
Our final score, Eastern Michigan 45, Michigan 42. Coming up next is ESPNU All-Access Army Football. We say goodnight from Ann Arbor.